And I'll give another one example of that. Stacey Dooley from Luton. She just won Dancing on Ice, is it? I grew up with Stacey. Stacey come back to Luton to do a documentary. Many of you would have seen it. When she sat down with me, she said, what's happening? She left Luton. She's been very successful. Well done to her. But when she come back, I said, well, Stacey, she said, what's happened? I said, you know your ex-boyfriend? She's come out recently, actually, talking about her upbringing, how she escaped the ghetto. I said, Stacey, you know your ex-boyfriend? She said, yeah. I said, well, he's now a radical Muslim. He converted in prison. You know your best friend when you was here? And Stacey done all the drama and all that sort of stuff as a, as a youngster. And so did her best friend. Beautiful girl. Absolutely beautiful girl. In fact, I saw her best friend's mum um, one New Year's Eve and she was just crying her eyes out. And I said, we're supposed to just tolerate this. I said, you need to go and speak to your best friend's mum and ask where their daughter is. When the last time they saw their daughter. And then tell that story. Because that's the real story. The real story of girls within our community being taken from their families, groomed, prostituted, beaten, raped, and meanwhile, and do you know what? And I spoke about this for years, and do you know what's just happened in the last four months, which hasn't hit any publicity yet? 26 Muslim men have been arrested for historic grooming offences in Luton at Wardown Park. An issue, that, and, and this is the thing that, so, I spoke about this and I didn't just speak about it, so you understand, so people can understand the depths of, do you know, I'll give one example, when you saw trouble on the streets at English Defence League rallies, there was trouble at those protests, I went and spent a night with a family in Blackburn and I heard the horrific stories of what was happening to their 11 and 12 year old daughter and that ship, their brother was there and he was probably 17, 18 and I sat and heard about all these horrific stories of the rapes of, the, uh, of the, their daughter and how the police again had done nothing when we had the demonstration the next day and there was a lot of trouble and i have always gone down to try and calm our supporters down who's at the front of that demonstration going absolutely insane that young girl's brother who am i to even when you've got those failures and you know the most disgusting thing I remember sitting in prison. When the Rotherham scandal broke, I was sat in prison, HMP Winchester. And I sat there and watched. And I see a girl, and I know that girl. And she went to Rotherham to protest outside Sean Wright, who was in charge of the police there because he was refusing to resign. So the English Defence League were then protesting. And I looked and I saw a girl, and she's from Birmingham, and I know her. And I know what's happened to her growing up. I know her history. She's a complete victim of gangs of men who have abused and raped her and tortured her. And then I watched as the snotty-nosed journalist looked down his nose upon her and labelled her as a far-right protester and an extremist. She's not an extremist, she's a victim. So I know I, I, I get so... When you've met the families I've met and heard the stories I've heard, another one. A young girl from Blackpool and her father. And do you know what? It's actually got a quite a nice end in this one. Her father, I went and meet with him. His daughter's gone. They've took his daughter. Took her from, and once the girl gets 16, 17, once they get to 16, 17, the police aren't interested. They're not helping. They're still victims. They've been groomed. They take, when your family kick up too much of a fuss, this is just simple process that they do in every town. They move her. So she'll be taken from Blackpool. She'll take him to Oldham. She's then in Oldham. The Muslim man that used to rape that girl would ring the girl's dad and leave the phone on the side and he'd be crying telling me whilst he's having to listen and not just the Muslim, the young Muslim who's raping her, he's raping her with his own dad. This is the crimes that are happening. So he has to listen and he was, a, and I, I spent years then, I kept in contact with him and in fact I got a phone call from him probably two years ago, 18 months ago crying, I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to wear up even talking about it. It's okay, carry on. Go to your water. No, to say that his daughter was home, 
that his Lord would come back. Tommy, no wonder you're upset with the stories you're describing. But it's important here that we show the truth. It's infuriating, that's what it is. It's infuriating to see the way, you know when you saw Jack Straw talk about it? He's talking about them like their statistics. Their daughters, man. Their sisters. And there are daughters and our sisters, and you act, and we, you betray us, or the people talking about it, and then, do you know Rotherham? Do you know after the Rotherham scandal broke? Do you know grants were given, I think one hundred twenty-eight thousand pounds, to fight Islamophobia in Rotherham?